Well, hey guys, guess what is all the rage over on everyone's favorite app, TikTok, spicules in skincare. When I first saw this, I thought, wait a minute, are they talking about spicules as in sponges, like what you get from the ocean or fresh water? Oh yes, that is what they're talking about. We're gonna get into it in today's video. What exactly is this crazy TikTok trend? Now, I first saw this, I think on my For You page, uh, it looked like people were getting all excited over some kind of skincare product that came in what looked like, uh, I don't know, something that you would use to play darts with. Here's part three, I'm finally actually doing the peel. So this has a kind of sponge in it, it's Korean based, that creates basically the effect of microneedling because they are similar to tiny needles. Now I'm going to massage it in for five to seven minutes and I'm going to be very um, aware of the pressure that I'm using. Um, so I just wanna know how it feels because I'm not sure if it's gonna hurt or not. <laughs> I will say you can definitely feel the little needles you know what it reminds me of is like those tiny like tiny tiny cactus that you can get i literally got one at cvs one time and if you like touch it and you get it in your finger it has like those really soft cactus needles but i'm going to keep doing this for five more minutes what the heck are spicules spicules are microscopic particles that make up sponges and sponges if you didn't know are like one of the oldest living animals on the planet spicules come in a wide array of shapes and sizes forms and if you look at them under the electron microscope they look like something out of a medieval torture arsenal they're rather sharp pointy spiky barbed all sorts of shapes and sizes doesn't that look like fun something we want to be patting in as part of a relaxing skincare routine right you don't have to be a genius to figure out by looking at these that they're abrasive to your skin they're made out of silica and calcium now while this is popular over on tiktok in all seriousness spicules are of interest as a delivery device for topical medications or active ingredients in skincare products because of their pointy shape, it's thought maybe they might help enhance penetration of things. Just looking at them under the microscope, you might think, well, perhaps these through their abrasive properties may help in exfoliating the skin, similar to a mechanical exfoliant like <laughs> walnut shells, which uh, we all know can be pretty irritating to the skin. Regardless, they are of attractive potential for therapeutic and cosmetic delivery of a variety of ingredients. It's really an issue in skincare formulation. I mean, manufacturers that make skincare products, they really have their hands tied because you've got this waxy barrier right the topmost layer of your epidermis it's the stratum corneum people always like to describe it as bricks and mortar the bricks are corneocytes and the mortar is lipids that kind of glue everything together and that lipid barrier really makes it difficult for things to penetrate and by and large i mean that's a good thing that's what keeps us protected from the outside world prevents like infectious organisms from getting in and it's what helps keep hydration in place and we all know that when that gets disrupted we can get dry skin or more prone to irritation and skin problems. But getting ingredients across that is no easy task, especially ingredients that are water loving and large in size. Now, conventional approaches to circumventing the barrier issue so as to allow ingredients in skincare products to get in include things like uh, nano emulsions, polymeric hydrogels, liposomes, these are not perfect solutions, however. Whereas others have used like physical approaches to actually disrupt the barrier, open it up, and allow for entry of active ingredients. Who here has ever used one of those uh, microneedling patches? They've become really popular over the years. They look like a pimple patch, but they have little microneedle darts on them that have said active ingredient and the idea is that you're going to put it on the skin it's going to enhance penetration of said ingredient however a lot of people find them very uncomfortable my understanding is actually difficult to reliably get a, a good uh, dose of the active on those darts so uh, delivery is variable the other issue with the micro dart patches is that anytime you have something under occlusion like with this patch it's more likely to be irritating so yes you are uh, perhaps enhancing penetration through those little micro darts but then the surrounding skin is occluded with that patch in the background of 
enhanced delivery of said active, it just might make it a lot more irritating for the user. So there's interest, as you can imagine, with alternative delivery methods. And if you look at a lot of these um, spicules uh, uh, up close, you can see they kind of look like micro needles. So obviously they are of interest, but the technology is in its infancy. To say for sure whether or not this is gonna be something that's going to work, let alone be safe or effective, there's a paper out there that takes spicules from sponge and and purifies them, isolates them out of, of the sponge. You know, it's, it's a complicated uh, process to get them out. I'll show you a schematic here of the, the methodology. Uh, and then this, this group, they um, tried to see if they could load the spicules with liposomes of, uh, of something and, and see if they could actually get it to work, actually get it to penetrate uh, pig skin. They used porcine skin models. You can see here that they got it to work in the sense that you can, you can actually see that spicule piercing the pig skin. And they show that the uh, liposomes do in fact penetrate uh, more readily with the with the microspicule technology, if you will. It's basically like a little mini hypodermic needle in a sense that you are smearing over the skin surface. I mean, the real benefit here really depends on what it is that's being loaded onto the spicule or being applied after you have used it. In, in effect, it is a form of physical exfoliation, but it also has a potential through these spicules to pierce the skin and deliver active ingredients. And that could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing. Uh, you know, your body may not react well to that. As I always like to point out, you're, you're not a pig, your skin's gonna be much different than, than pig skin. But there actually is a study looking at a micro spicule with uh, epidermal growth factor. Growth factor, their, their penetration in the skin is, is variable. Whether or not they do anything is, is also of, of significant question. Regardless, there is a study where they looked at uh, microspicules with epidermal growth factor for improvement of uh, crow's feet, wrinkles around the eyes. They had the participants in one half of the group just use uh, a growth factor to, to the area for four weeks. And the other group, they had used this microspicule growth factor combo. Now at the end of the eight weeks, both groups had improvement in the appearance of wrinkles, but the group who used epidermal growth factor with microspicules, they had a more significant improvement in comparison to just, just the growth factor alone, suggesting that they had better penetration. And in fact, they did show that the penetration was enhanced. Now it's interesting the way they had the group uh, getting the microspicule treatment. It's interesting how they had them use it. They had them apply this every single day for four weeks. And first they put it on and they massage it in for 20 seconds. Then they had them apply distilled water to dissolve any remaining spicules, I guess in the skin surface, and then massage for an additional 20 seconds. And I guess the thought process here with having them use the distilled water to dissolve any remaining spicules is to minimize irritation. The group that got the micro spicules with EGF they did experience some temporary short-lived redness and a sensation of prickling. That went away very quickly without any intervention. So overall, it was well tolerated. There were no real adverse events aside from that with the microspicule EGF group. So it suggests that they are safe, but again, they only looked out to eight weeks. Long story short, this paper did suggest that the microspicule EGF combo did result in better penetration of the EGF and an overall more significant improvement in wrinkles around the eyes. So that's promising, but again, it's a really small study, not perfect, and it has a lot of limitations and more research needs to be done. So what do I think of this? I think it's far too early to say if this is gonna end up being an effective delivery method for active ingredients, or if it is gonna be an effective or safe method for exfoliating, for smoothing the skin surface out. Like, is this actually any better than just using a chemical exfoliant like salicylic acid or glycolic acid to smooth the skin surface? Is this any more effective though at smoothing the skin surface and exfoliating and helping facilitate desquamation of the corneocytes, those cells that, that make up that, that protective layer, they shed. 
And that's really what you, you are hoping to even out and smooth out are, are those shedding cells there with exfoliants. Is this necessarily any better than using a chemical exfoliant? When you use a chemical exfoliant or any type of exfoliant for that matter, it will allow better penetration of subsequent things that are applied afterwards, whether that be your vitamin C serum or your retinoid. And this can be a good thing in that you, know, you get better uptake, but it also can increase the irritancy of that ingredient. So it's a delicate balance. And what works for one person may not work for another in terms of enhancing penetration of things. It may be too much, it may be too aggressive for certain people. But using spicules to actually deliver active ingredients rather than simply enhancing penetration by smoothing skin surface, the skin surface out, to, to actually load them up with the ingredient and have those spicules pierce the skin and introduce it into the skin. That is something that I do think is of interest as a topical delivery approach, but more research is needed. Just because it appears to be safe at eight weeks, I do have concerns and reservations about the use of these spicules in skincare. As I said, the spicules, they are comprised of silica, and uh, calcium. And there is one issue with putting silica on the skin, especially when you're talking about it piercing into the skin, is there's a phenomenon known as a silica granuloma. Now, silica, silica is very abundant naturally in our environment. We're exposed to it a lot. And despite that, the, the occurrence of silica granulomas on the skin is actually pretty rare. You can develop these though through traumatic introduction of silica into the skin from sand, glass, rock, slate. This is a, something that uh, you know an at-risk group might be somebody who is doing some type of construction work where they come in contact uh, with things like this. Or if you were in a car accident and bits of glass got into the skin, in theory, you could later on in life develop a silica granuloma. What's a silica granuloma? It's basically a foreign body response to the silica that has been in introduced into your skin via traumatic means. And essentially your immune system gets kind of like annoyed by it being there and tries to wall it off. And the end result of that is the appearance of a bump on the skin. And they can you know, be pink bumps, smooth bumps, or just very large bumps. And I mean, when you biopsy these bumps, you can see these bizarre geometric shapes that are obviously of, not of human origin. <laughs> and they, they come from uh, you know, the introduction of silica um, from, from a traumatic injury. And the funny thing about these is they don't just happen overnight. They can they can appear, you know, gradually. It's called a latency period from the time it's introduced to the time these bumps actually appear. Anywhere from six months all the way out to 60 years. Uh, these might not appear for decades and decades. And at that, at that point, you know, too little too late. Because the way to get rid of these is surgical removal. Uh, uh, you know, it can be quite a, a challenge depending on how large they are and that thing. That would be my main reservation with these. Uh, but otherwise, you know, it's exciting to see where the science goes, but otherwise it's, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, premature to say anything about the, the benefits of using these over using any other exfoliant out there at the very least. And so stay tuned. I don't recommend going out and rubbing, rubbing spicules on your skin. Uh, I, I do think it not only has the potential for, for this, but uh, as you can imagine, the likelihood of irritation is definitely there from something like this, as with any exfoliant. But here, I mean, I showed you what these things look like up close. You can imagine them. It really looks like some kind of medieval torture to the stratum corneum. Who knows, maybe in a few years I'll be making a video raving all about spicules and skincare products. But as it stands now, more research is needed and I do have long-term safety concerns with uh, introducing silica into your skin in that way. People love DIYs, right? So here's why you shouldn't go out and you know, go diving for sponges and, and, and try, try and do this yourself. Okay, sponges. I mentioned this earlier. They're like the oldest living organism on the planet. They're really cool. There are tons of different types of sponges out there. And um, for many, many years, people have been using natural sponges to bathe with. The silk sponge. The silk sponge is harmless. He's safe. Uh, what's his name, actually? Spongia officinalis. 
not dangerous to, to you know to bathe with a silk uh, silk sponge bathing sponge but other sponges can actually be pretty dangerous to the skin because you know uh, either you can introduce shards of the of the spicules into the skin like I mentioned uh, or a lot of sponges are colonized with jellyfish so you not only get a traumatic injury from those shards getting into the skin, but then the jellyfish that colonize them get released and sting. And that can be pretty deadly, actually. A lot of sponges produce toxins called crinotoxins, and many make this uh, slimy mucus that is very irritating to the skin. Sponge dermatitis is actually something that we, we see a fair amount in like, uh, well, sponge divers. Uh, and, and people who dive, uh, my, uh, marine biology students, uh, anybody you know hanging out with sponges in the ocean is an at-risk group for this. But it's actually pretty serious, and it can be broken down into two types of, of skin reactions. First, you have uh, an initial itchy dermatitis that happens usually within 20 minutes of contact with these. You get itching, burning, the skin can swell up, you can get these little water blisters that can later become filled with pus. It actually can result in muscle pain, joint pain, fevers, and in some cases you can go on to develop full-blown anaphylactic shock. Sponge dermatitis is serious. It has the potential to be life-threatening. Then later on you have the potential for a delayed irritant dermatitis as a result of things that have been introduced into the skin, the spicules and anything that's colonizing the spicules, you also are at risk for infections. Uh, you know, a sponge, while it's all natural, it's not the most hygienic thing to be just injecting into your skin. So it's, it actually can be pretty serious. There's something called sponge diver's disease. Basically those little jellyfish that can colonize the sponge, the stinging jellyfish, they can result in a necrotic dermatitis, basically death and destruction of the skin as it relates to having come in contact with these sponges. This is interesting, dogger bank itch. A dermatitis that happens because the individual has become sensitized to 2-hydroxyethyl dimethyl sulfoxonium chloride that comes from the sea shervil. Can you imagine if somebody in the clean beauty movement encountered that word 2-hydroxyethyl dimethyl sulfoxonium chloride? They would be quaking in their boots, but hand them a sponge and spick you all up and yeah, next thing you know, they're selling you an $80 cream and an egg to put in your vagina. I digress. All right, so that, that can happen. You can become sensitized to that compound that is found on the C. shervil, all natural C. shervil. Uh, and of course you can develop a secondary infection. Sponge dermatitis, it is not, it is not anything to take lightly. Uh, when a patient presents with sponge dermatitis, the management is, is initial decontamination of the skin. Actually, you have to take either tape or believe it or not, rubber cement. Yeah, getting real high tech, but I, I'm not joking. Um, put it on the skin and tape strip or peel off the rubber cement, just like you used to do as a kid on your hand to remove those spicules. Uh, you know, right away. And then they have to do cereal uh, dilute vinegar soaks of the area. They have to be monitored. You know, they have to come back and follow up very carefully because they're at risk for developing secondary skin infections. And again, they can go on to develop blisters and serious complications. So it's nothing to take lightly. All that to say, I, I, you know, I doubt you're gonna have these issues if you buy the spicule creams. Assuming the manufacturer has, you know, done right by their manufacturing best practices, which they should be, and they have purified the spicule to remove all that potentially harmful gick, which you don't want to be coming in contact with. But regardless, you still obviously can develop an irritant dermatitis. Uh, but yeah, this is not something I would do or recommend. More research is needed, but it's an interesting approach. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if and how the research evolves over the years. Anyway, y'all, that's what I can tell you about spicules in skincare. Uh, proceed with caution. As with everything you encounter on the old TikTok, <laughs> you don't stop. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now on the end slate, I'm going to put my recent video on another TikTok trend, although they've probably forgotten about it over there because things 
they come and go. Uh, all about skin flooding. So check that one out next if you missed it. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.